Welcome to the program, Harry Dent, author of the new book, The Sale of a Lifetime, editor of uh, uh, Economy and Markets at HarryDent.com. Um, welcome, Harry. How are you? Yeah, nice to be back, Glenn. In the 1980s, um, you kind of woke up to the stock market cycle, uh, and you uh, began to track this in a different way than everybody else. And you called the bubble of the 90s, you called the bubble uh, of uh, the early 2000s and 2008. Um, and I've been following you for a while, and the one that is coming is gigantic. Would you agree? Yeah, it is, because, you know, we had two natural bubbles um, with the tech bubble and internet and then with the baby boomers peak in spending which was in the 2007 which we like you said we predicted 20 years before that happened that we'd have a greater boom than anybody thought but then it would peak around 2007 and of course we've had quantitative easing ever since to try to ease the pain and, and it still didn't work but now we've got a third and what i hate about it totally artificial bubble that's all about printing free money, you know, $12 trillion of free money printed around the world. And, and, and since zero interest rates were not low enough, now we've got to go negative in more and more countries. This is insanity to, to just force people to keep uh, buying back their own stocks with companies or, or borrowing that little bit more or speculating more or traders and stuff. And that's all we're growing on. And so this is much more dangerous. And I call this the third and final bubble. And, and when we peaked in the 60s and early 70s, we had three higher highs in the market and three um, uh, bigger crashes. And, of course, the last one, 73 to 74, was the big one. And that's what I'm seeing here, that, that 2017 to 2019 approximately is going to be the time when we see a crash that's bigger and deeper than 2008 and 9, And it actually puts us into more of a depression than just a great recession as we saw back then. Because when you, when you grow debt two, two and a half times GDP for 40 years, you're going to have a debt bubble, and that's going to cause financial asset bubbles and stocks and real estate and commodities and everything else. And those bubbles are going to have to unwind. They have to, or you can't go forward in life. The economy can't move forward. So we've been putting this off now for seven, eight years, which means it's like a drug addict taking more and more to keep from coming down from the high. When you finally get hit and go to detox, it's not going to be pretty. But, you know, a lot of people have um, taken this hit. Greece is probably the, the, the biggest. They've taken their hit. Um, or G- Germany, um, they're still out of control, but they're still thinking that they're going to now bail in. China spends more and more money. I mean, in your book, you talk about these oh. ghost cities that are... I mean, I was I was struck by this the Chang the Changsha Sky City Sky Dream. You write it was meant to become the world's tallest building at two thousand seven hundred and forty nine feet, two hundred and two stories, built in the shortest time. Imagine building a two hundred and two story building. The Chinese wanted to build it in ninety days. Yeah. Uh, it, we it built the, the first uh, prefab uh, skyscraper. <laughs> oh, it's now a fishing hole. Yeah, exactly. the whole thing was stopped and collapsed, and now they just the big hole in the ground where the foundation was. They've just filled it with water, and the locals are using it to raise fish. But anyway, th- there's another country completely out of control. Um, well, you know, it's worse than that, Glenn. I mean, they, now the latest thing, Shenzhen, which is the most bubbly large city there, they're now selling apartments, 66 square feet, the size of a decent closet, for $132,000, seven to ten times the income of the people in that city to get a closet to live in. I mean, if that's not a bubble, I don't know what is. So, 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 Harry, um, the the whole thing looks like it's coming down. Is there going to be any yeah. system that survives? Well, what happens at a time like this, I mean, this is when you can't listen to your stockbroker or even a good financial advisor because every you're going to have a big reset. We've had bubbles in everything from this endless low and zero interest rates and endless stimulated economy and printing of money. I mean, this is always going to happen when this happens throughout history. So, so everything has to reset. We even have a bond bubble. Normally, treasury bonds would be a safe place to go longer term, but they're going to have to at least correct it first from their own bubble, from, from central banks pushing down their yields to zero and negative before they can grow again. And then stocks have to come down and real estate commodities have already crashed. And I've been telling people for years, when bubbles burst, it's not 20, 30, 40%. It is 70, 80, 90. And commodities have already collapsed 70 to 80% 
proving that when bubbles burst, they, they crash. They don't just go down slowly and they don't just correct. And that's going to have to happen to everything else. So there's nowhere to hide. So the thing to do is you just get out. I mean, I went short yesterday. I'm, I'm with HSBC. We, we said, hey, we're, we're looking like we're going to break a key trend line up, which we did this morning, and, and the markets could be starting to, to crash again. And, and I never know exactly when it's going to happen, and the market never makes it easy, but it is going to be nasty. And one of the other things we've warned people, and every, almost every bubble has had this happen, especially in stocks, the first crash, even though the bubble is going to end up going down 80% on average, the first crash is going to be 40 to 45% in two to three months. And that happened in China last year. That happened in 1929. That happened in the, in the tech bubble. It happened in the Nikkei bubble in Japan. And that's what we do in this book. We look at all major bubbles in history and say, look, these are not black swans when they crash. They build predictably over a period of time. They grow exponentially. But then when they crash, they crash at least twice as fast and and, and half of that happens in the first two to three months. So you're an idiot if you don't get out a little bit early. If you want to wait until it's proven, you're going to be down 40% before you can react. That's not good investment strategy. So, um, Harry, I've, let's just say, you know, I'm the average person. I don't have a, uh, you know, I have a 401k or if I have a stockbroker, I, I barely even know his name. <laughs> um, and I go to the stockbroker and they're going to say, look, keep it in. You know, this is long term. You're going to lose money now, but you're not planning on pulling it out for another 20 years anyway. You leave it in. Yep, and that is why you cannot listen to these people now. 80% of the time or more, that is right. But I tell people all the time, when you see a major long-term generational spending wave peak, like in 29 or 68, and especially when you see a bubble like 1929, 1929 crash was 89% in stocks in less than three years, and it took 24 years to get back to even. If you'd have been a retiring person with a 401k plan back then, uh, you would have been dead before you got back to even. So that is not... They don't, stocks don't always come back, not when you see a major bubble burst and or when you see a long-term trend. Even in 68, that was not as much of a bubble boom, but when the Bob Hope generation stopped spending and when inflation and OPEC set in, it took 54 years to get back to even on that. Manhattan real estate, it crashed the most in the 30s. The greatest city in the world, supposedly, which people would think can't go down, took into the mid-50s, even longer than stocks to get back to even. So you have to get out of the way. And what we do in the book is we say, look, there's going to be different sectors over the next two, three, four, five years. They're going to crash and bottom. And, and, and you know, we show models for bubbles to show, okay, you can know about how much downside there is. In real estate, it's more like 50 to 60 percent. In stocks, it's more like 70 to 80. In commodities, 80 to 90. When you see that bubble get erased, then you can get back in long term and listen to your financial advisor again. But right now, they will tell you the wrong thing, I can guarantee you. They'll just say, it's all right. You're diversified. Diversification didn't help in 2008 and 9, and it will help less now. And this is the final bubble crash because there's no way the Fed can pull this stunt again. If we go into a worse downturn, they're going to lose all credibility. So you got to just got to get out of the way. And, and I'm so, just saying, look, they, we have four major indicators, which you mentioned a lot of them earlier, that all point down the same time into late 2019, early 2020. We just got like about a three year period here of extreme danger. After that, you can feel better about stepping back in. But, hey, what, what's it to miss three years of stock gains when the stock market, by the way, has gone nowhere uh, in, in the last couple of years and commodities have only gone down? So, so it's bubbled up so much that we think there's less to miss. And Baron Rothschild always said, the secret to my wealth was I always sold a little early. Um, Harry, the, um, uh, you say that you have cash on hand. Yeah. I read a I read a story yesterday that um, you know cash is crashing everywhere, uh, and it's crashing because the central banks can't control it anymore. Our own central bank, the Federal Reserve, uh, has a white paper out, an internal white paper that was uh, released that shows that if this next recession hits, to make any impact, they believe they have to print four trillion dollars in bailout stimulus money, um, and they said, we're not even sure that would work. 
Uh, I mean, what happens to cash? Well, then, Are you and, concerned and about cash? You, one of the things we show in the book is I show all how the, the total financial assets, loans, um, you know, mortgages, stocks, bonds, everything is about $300 trillion, far beyond stretch any time in history. Can't even compare it. That's $300 trillion, and in a time like the 1930s when these bubbles deleverage, I'm talking about minimum $120 trillion in financial assets disappearing and not coming back for a long time. So I would say if the central banks want to offset the next downturn, they're going to have to print $100 trillion or more worldwide. I don't think they can get away with that. So, so four trillion would not be enough. They so don't what, know what they're talking about because they're just trying to slide by and keep the bubble going until they retire from office, like Bernanke or, you know, Obama now and any other president. Everybody just wants to push this thing down the road until the next administration or, or Fed chairman comes in because somebody's going to have to take the consequences. You don't get something for nothing. If there's nothing I've learned in life, that's the number one lesson. You don't get something for nothing, and we've had the biggest something for nothing economy for decades, but particularly since the financial crisis in 2008-9 when we've been living on printed money. You can't solve a debt crisis by creating more debt and printing more money, because that's how you got there in the first place, printing money through debt. This is crazy. Harry, do you believe that you can trust the banks to keep your money in? No, because they lend money out. And, and they've got all types. Of, I mean, Deutsche Bank is down 92% since its peak in 2007 and continuing to go down because they've got $55 trillion in derivative exposures, you know, uh, four times or whatever, six, six times the GDP of Germany or whatever, um, and bad loans uh, in, in Italy and bad loans in Germany, bad loans with frackers in the United States. They, they, you know, Italian and German banks and more and more banks have bad loans, and when those loans go bad, they have only have 10% capital, which Deutsche Bank now only has 3% because they've been yes. battered, and, and you start losing money on loans, and all of a sudden, oops, you don't have the money to give depositors back because they lend against your deposits. And they're your deposits, not theirs. They don't just raise capital and lend out money. That's what a, a normal financial institution should do. They pledge 10% of our deposits. And then, like in the Depression, when those loans go bad, they're like, well, you know, we said we had your deposits, but we actually don't. We lost it. We lent it out 10 right. to 1 to your reserves and deposits, and we never, and we didn't get it back. I only so, have so 30 you can't. You have uh, to have I, your money in a brokerage account. I prefer to be with an independent um, firm that only does transactions, does not invest in investment banking or speculate in the markets right. or lend money for mortgages online or anything. Right. And, and you just have your money in your own name. They cannot lend against an account in your own name. They can lend against your um, checking okay. or savings account. Uh, Harry, Harry I've, I've got literally 10 seconds. I need a yes or no on this. Do you think this bubble is going to happen fast enough to affect the election? Um, possibly, because we just made a big break today. So okay. we could be down 10% in a matter of weeks. And yes, a, a, a down market helps the outsider okay. like Trump, and it hurts the insider like my, Clinton. We've said that for a long time. My grandfather, um, my grandfather lived through the Depression, and he always said the people who made money during the Depression were the people that had money during the Depression, that got their money out. Exactly. That's the premise of Harry's book, The Sale of a Lifetime, available everywhere now, The Sale of a Lifetime. Harry, oh, good, always good to have you on, and thank you so much for the warning today. Okay, um, thanks, Glenn. Uh,